Well, welcome aboard. It is another exciting podcast, another episode of the Coffee Break podcast. We're from LockDoc Security. My name is Chad Lingefelt. Uh, over here to my right is Aaron Beaver from uh, Elwood Digital and the Suffer Club. And on my left is Ben Sultzy. Who needs no introduction? Hello. Hello. It's Asa Abloy. Asa Abloy. Yes, please. So Ben is here from Asa Abloy. He came down to visit today. And uh, so uh, in, f- in, in full disclosure, yeah, this is, well, uh, a few weeks ahead of Christmas. But we wanted to talk a little bit about Christmas and maybe a little bit about Christmas, but more so on the year 2018, yeah. kind of a year in reflection. Yeah. All right. So this will be the last podcast of the year for us. It's been exciting. But the, I mean, I don't want to pump this up too big. A lot of pressure. But a it lot. is a lot of pressure that we're going to have to kind of pull through on the final podcast mm-hmm. of the year for our our uh, our you know launch this year in 2018 of the Coffee Break Podcast. Wow, it's, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, but I'm really <laughs> really really glad to have you guys here today. It's going to be good. <laughs> I mean, you I'm brought you brought in the hev- you brought in the heavy hitters. FYI. I mean, yeah, Ben, yeah, it's Suffer Club. No, it's Aaron. Ben. No, Beeves. <laughs> Gonna be good. We've been building videos all year. It's, it's exciting. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Good so, stuff. so here we go. Let's let's back up. It is uh, one Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays, and really excited that you could be here and uh, and and really kind of reflect back. It has been an exciting 2018. Yeah. For a, on a lot of a lot of aspects, uh, all of our companies have seen growth in er- various ways. Um, they've all been focused in a lot of different directions, and so. Let's kind of talk about that. What has 2018, what has 2018 meant to us individually as we've kind of uh, gone through the year? Is it to you? I think think it's to you. Oh, well, I mean, you know, it's been a great year, honestly. I mean, I've checked a lot of big things off as a startup business, you know, entrepreneur started from nothing. 18 has been a phenomenal year. Um, Worked with some great clients and... You know, it's it's it really has been a great year. I've done some really really things that I'll, I'll look back on that like I'll be able to tell my kids about. You yeah. know, and 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 for me, those are some really things that I'm excited about. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I got to ride the Blue Ridge Parkway from one side to the other. That is a huge accomplishment for me. Yeah. Something I've wanted to do for years. Um, but I've also had the opportunity to work with great companies the MSC network like you, I mean, I, that was a phenomenal experience, which opened a door that I would have never thought that had been opened. And, um, yeah, so it's been, a, it's been a really good year for me. So what, what's something that stands out? I mean, I, you, you have had so many yeah. highs this year, but what's, what's something if you were to pick one and now that's a hard thing to do, yeah. but pick one that you would say, Hey, this is, this has been really Something something that's going to be memorable this year. So on a personal level or on a business-related level? You can pick one of each. Maybe we'll, we'll start yeah, I mean, with I, which one and we'll come back around. So personal level. We've got time. I mean, yeah, well, sure we do. <laughs> well, I'm, just, I'm, you know, I'm really excited about your part. So uh, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, man, like. Personal level. From a, okay, from a personal level, uh, I've been able to reach some accomplishments. So the Suffer Club is, you know, a big initiative that we've taken this year. And, um. I was able to reach one of my running goals. I did 100 kilometers, uh, an extremely very difficult race. And last year, I, I, there was no way I could have done 50 miles. And for how difficult this yeah. race was, that is a huge accomplishment for me to check off mentally. Um, if physically, it's great. But I think from the mental side of it, like that I was able to wrap my head around that, that I was able to to embrace that and go for it that was huge um from the business side um man i real quick yeah. on, on that yeah. on the personal side you have a video online on yep. youtube yep. And, and various other places but youtube the suffer club if you search that up yep. um there's a you know six seven minute video yep. on uh, on that 50 miler yeah. and one on on and your 100k yeah so i did a a few weeks ago i did a 50 mile race in ridiculous conditions yeah. i mean did like, you see that video oh yeah yeah it was it, crazy. i will not go near that place yeah <laughs> it's like it's just yeah. running in mud for yeah. right 9 mm-hmm. hours it's tough. It's tough to do. I yeah, commend you on that. Yeah, one. but that's that's impressive. I couldn't get my shoes dirty like that. No, that would, that would bother me. <laughs> Looking down at your legs, just soaked in mud, you'd be like, "Ew, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Good. No, no, this isn't good. Let's but, walk away." But those that was a that was a huge accomplishment sure. for me. Um, yeah. uh, but goal from the business side, um, 
I mean, all of the clients that I've gotten to work for yeah. have been, I mean, there's not really one uh, that, I mean, I've got to do some really, really cool things. In October, I was in Ukraine for two weeks documenting yeah. a mission organization. That was, that was probably a phenomenal, phenomenal experience. Glow Missions, they do an amazing work, and yep. it was such an honor to be on that trip, to see them, how they love on those kids, on those orphans, and really, it, that was a really cool experience. So, a lot of uh, a lot of running this yeah, year. Yeah, a lot of running. And uh, some a lot of travel for you this yeah, year. Yeah, a lot of travel, yeah. Ukraine being yeah. the farthest. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. It is awesome. Ben. I wish I went as far as Ukraine and ran 100 kilometers. Oh, you did. But similar. Hey. One, we right, we have the business side and, and yeah. the personal. Sure. And um, this year was interesting in a lot of different ways. Asabli, obviously, and, and MSCs have had a, a successful year, mm-hmm. I think, and as it's always evolving and, and we're always learning and changing in Asabli's you know, invested more into the channel and new bringing new people in. So it's been fun to work with new people and see the effort, you know, behind what I feel like part of what I've been doing is preaching this, how valuable it can be. And so to see that now finally start coming through has been really, really, really interesting. Is it not a thing where you, you, you get on a path and you just expect immediate results? Right. And it takes... It takes a long time yeah. to start building influence into and other you, organizations. And yeah. then when you start seeing the, the benefits and those things start to reap, it's really exciting. It is. Yeah. So I think, you know, we're still just, you know, there, there's still a lot that we can do. But to see the effort and, and to see what support we're starting, you know, I think we in the MSC space we've had that, but to see it now turn full fledged into all of our sales organizations, all of our brands being excited about working with these groups, you know, really focused in you know changing their message for the first time ever to deliver it to this group of customers has been, I think, really really exciting to be a part of. So that's been a, a really big change for us and a, and a fun ride for the year. Obviously yeah. we've, you know, we've got a lot going on coming into the year, which yeah. has been really great yeah. working with Aaron and, and yeah. all the others on. Yeah. The, new one, one of the things I got to do this year was I got to be a part of the MSC advisory board meeting. And honestly that under the hood, being able to see what is under the hood for the people that are a part of the MSC network, that is extremely exciting about how much effort and intentionality that not only people in the industry, but also Asa Abloy is like being very specific for the content that they're delivering, yeah. these groups, how they're how they're actually trying to better these people's businesses. It's not just what can we get from them. It's like, how can we give back to them? And that was that was a really cool experience. Yeah. Thanks. I, I, thought, no, I, thought, it, I thought it was a lot. Of, yeah, we had a it was, I mean, it was great learning. It great, really was. Great time. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. Chris and I have been a part of the advisory board now for, I think, three or four years, maybe four. I don't know. Um, oh, so you're saying... Time's up. Is that what are you saying? No, <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I, w- I was <laughs> referring to the fact that when we first got involved to and to where it is now, it's been a it's been a transition of of watching that that whole thing kind of come together to yeah. to to be able mm-hmm. to see the hard work that goes in and the outcome of yeah. it. You know, so and then it's it's just like in a lot of situations in your business, you you launch something and then you go back and you assess it and say, okay, how can we make it better? And to be able to see that progression over that number of years has been exciting. Yeah. And to see where the program is going to continue to go and how it's going to continue to get stronger based off of the real intention. Like like he just said, the real intentionality behind the content is is incredible. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who have no clue what we're talking about, the Medico Security Center program, the the MSC program is a industry specific program. Uh, program that LockDoc Security has been a part of for the past 10 or 11 years and has really been transformational in our business um, of, of getting us connected with right, the right people, mm. learning from other uh, industry peers and all that. Um, and then we were uh, honored to be able to be a part of the advisory board now for the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's kind of what we're talking about. And so it's interesting, all the people in the room and even Chris, who's uh, who's behind the screen right now because he's engineering this for us, is we have all been able to uh, to impact that in different ways. Yeah. Ben works on the manufacturing side. We're one of the businesses that are involved in it. And Aaron here recently became um, uh, involved with cr- capturing content and documenting yeah. the the endeavors behind what's going on. And to see all those things kind of come together is really cool and all be sitting in the same room together and how that's been 
impactful to all of us this year is yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah, very mm-hmm. cool. And his social media platform, the Suffer Club, that's another one right. I would say. <laughs> Well, it's true because this year has been a big one for me too, on a personal level for the goals that I've set, Yeah, you know, uh, to get myself back into yeah. shape because it's been a long time of traveling yeah. and, you know, hustling, being on the road. And so a big concerted effort and setting goals for myself this year to, to try to accomplish some things. And one of those driving factors was actually things like the Suffer Club where you feel like you're a part of a community yeah. and you're challenging yourself and you're posting things, you're sharing, people are cheering you on. Yeah. And that's what I really liked about what Aaron does and, and what you do for others is you're always, it's you're, you're sharing other people's success, which is really cool. And so I felt like that was something that always pushed me this year because for the first time ever, I ran a uh, hundred miles in a, in a month dude, and I ran 30, I think it was 34 miles in a week. And I felt like- wow phenomenal about Bro, that's it incredible yeah so i mean it was it was really yeah. because of a lot of it was sparked by you know having other people that are doing those things and then you're like man i gotta get out there and post yeah. something and then yeah. get and make some personal records and and it's, it's you know, like an accountability group yeah it was good no, no matter where you're at yeah. right you know if right. you have people to do those do life with no matter where you are if you get in those small groups together and it helps to hold you accountable encourage you and challenge you and then you take that to a digital platform and expand it it's really cool yeah, yeah. let's just set the record straight this guy puts up large numbers like he was talking <laughs> like a, oh you know I'm, i've run a little bit like just a, and I, i'm not a fast runner i'm getting faster the first time he posted it's like five miles at like no it was actually six miles and i think it was like a 750 average i mean he threw down a, the gauntlet. Like I remember seeing the message, and I was like, "Are you ki-? like that's Casey Nice? Well, bro, you were, that's like, like fast. You, you were, well, yeah. I was, mean, was, like, no, 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 no. no. It's, I mean, it's no. We're we're getting better, right? I mean, but yeah. that was one because I remember what did we t- we were talking about this? It was like, oh, we can actually go run together. You're like, well, you have to get your short shorts. I still haven't gotten those. I know. So I feel like I can't go no, run listen, until I go get. Shorts. I've got yeah. So I've got my next goal is I have to get those, and then I'll be able to go. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm part of the one inch inseam club. Yeah, that's you know not be a goal for yeah, anybody. No, no. Just, you have to keep your distance. <laughs> you got to have some weird goals, man. They can't <laughs> all do. be like, I want to grow my business. It's like, right. come on, have some fun. Yeah, oh, exactly. I want to freak well, out all my neighbors here's as the thing. much as possible next year. I'm trying to just not. <laughs> he has accomplished that. Right? I have. I, have, right, I really right. have. See, I'm trying to get Chad to join. Chad used to run. Mm-hmm. Run a lot, like he—he's even got his all of his data. Yeah. So I'm trying to get him back and into it. Well, he's got a watch that can track it all. He so does. What, you he's know, partially there. Right. That way, yeah, first step. It, first get an Apple exactly. Watch that's going to track your steps and your movement. Exactly. Well, you know, as many times <laughs> as they walk around this business, yeah. this business part. Uh, I'm a walker now. I've moved into the walking stage. <laughs> or of skateboarder. Life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got his stride rights, and you know, he, yeah, exactly. he laces like velcros get, them up. Get and, my white New Balances on, and I'm ready to roll. So what's the what's the Christmas like tradition? You know, Thanksgiving is you say yeah. what you're thankful for. Yeah. What's the Christmas tradition? Isn't there is there something that you do the, on Christmas? Cr- the Christmas tradition is you say what you want. I think. I think. Oh, it you is. say what you yeah. want. Thanksgiving, yeah. you say what you're thankful for. <laughs> Christmas, you say, <laughs> you're like I want what I, what I want. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's very true. What do you want, Chad? <laughs> You know what? It, I've had this conversation with my great, wife and great with my question. family, yeah, for for a long time. And I, it's it's one of these things. I, I don't know. Maybe it's a season of life that you move through. I mean, Christmas is exciting to watch, um, watch the kids. But I honestly, and I and I don't. This is going to be. I don't know how to how to dive into this, but it has transformed over the last several years to changing it into what can we do for others during during the christmas season to be honest with you like um we took that initiative on last year here within this organization to adopt a family and Mm -hmm. it was so much more rewarding than anything that we had done like all year long was to be able to deliver that those gifts uh very anonymously and then um the family sent pictures back of the kids opening that up on christmas morning that's awesome yeah like that was by far more exciting than than a lot of other goals that we had set out for over the year. And so that's really what some of that stuff has kind of changed around. It's like, okay, you know, we have a lot to be thankful for as, you know, as, as Americans, but there's a lot of people that are still not, you know? Yeah. So how do you, how do you bring those into, uh, and, and be able to utilize things that you have accomplished through the year to be able to give back. And that's, that's really been a big focus for us this year. That's awesome. That is awesome. I wasn't expected. That's no, a, seriously. Like, like, <laughs> but you're making it. You're making it a, a team kind of 
like every everyone's a part of this and shares in that yeah. joy and that there was a so there's a, a a radio show here um that's been doing this for years but they do this like um christmas uh i don't know what they call B&E. it B and E, and they break it like break yeah, it break it in. In. Yeah. yeah. So they they basically set up where they're going to to go uh, give gifts and set up a Christmas tree. Basically, give Christmas to somebody. Sure. And they it's this big thing that they do, and they oh, they do it for a lot of different families. Yeah, yeah. And so one of our guys here, this is many years ago, said, "Hey, we should get involved with that. We could help them pick the doors open." And I'm like, I don't think that they're actually breaking in. Right. I think it's like you know, <laughs> we're not actually going to break and enter yeah, into people's homes. I, I think it's like coordinated with somebody <laughs> in the extended family but <laughs> i would hope so <laughs> but it got us it got us thinking yeah. in the mindset of well what what can we do and so we we had talked about it for many many years and then uh last year we just said hey you know it is what it is and actually um uh allison here who is on our accounting team basically said hey i'll help head it up and so she coordinates all of wow. it we talk about it for a couple of months leading up to she's got I mean, if you walk back there right now the entire office is packed well not right now as you're hearing this but as we're recording this yeah if you walk back there it literally the half of the office is piled up with gifts that our company has donated awesome. internally uh, it's a it's a really cool thing to watch yeah, yeah. you know uh, so anyways that's that's been a, a cool tradition that nice. we we just i mean we're in the second year so that's that's really cool. Yeah. There's a company uh, that I documented uh, called U, uh, UST. Yep. They're in Greenville, and they did the exact same thing. And it like their entire company uh, got into it. I mean, they went way over the top. I mean, it was incredible. Brought all these families in, had gifts and, and Christmas, and it, and I documented from the business side of it, like the actual staff leadership, and we asked them the questions, you know, just about how it helped change the like uh, around the business and there was so much buy-in from the employees it it changed it was a pivotal thing that they did every year that was just about giving back and it and he's like we could watch the culture in our business change because of this event every year and so that's not why they did it but he was just saying like how impactful it was to their culture and their community of their business so Spinning off of that, culture-wise, uh, we launched one of the really cool highlights this year. It's been something we've been fighting on to get through, um, not internally fighting, but fighting just the obstacle of making it an important factor of setting out our core values. Mm-hmm. And that's been something we've we've wanted to do for a long time, and we were able to muddle through that this year and, and get those out. And one of those is um, outrageous kindness. And so how can, what are things that we can do that it, from an outrageous kind of standpoint? And this is one of them, you know, cause we want that to be something on an ongoing basis right. that you can, that you can hang your hat on outrageous kindness in how we treat each other in our yeah. organization, how we treat our customers and our vendors and all that. And then on top of that, how we can extend it to our community. Um, and it was cool because this past Wednesday, um, I, I asked eight people in our organization to take e- one of each of the eight core values and tell tell the organization what it is, give a definition to it, but then give an, a practical example. And the example, and I, I don't want to say I'd forgotten about it, but it slipped farther back in my mind. Well, one of the guys that uh, gave an example on outrageous kindness was earlier this year, um, I guess it was earlier this year. It was. It, it may have been end of last year, but it, it's it's been a it's been a while. Um, his uh, son had broken his arm uh, doing some type of uh, school. Some or something things. Like that. Some things. And, some things. Um, and our team got together, signed a lock doc hat. Like you know, we didn't have his cast obviously, so they signed the hat and then delivered it to him. And he said that that one thing, that hat, sits on his son's bedpost. And it's still something that they point back to as a family of how this organization had shown kindness to them. And it's those little things. I like it. Did, it was something that, you know, the organization did as a team. They all pulled together and did it and uh, didn't didn't really think about the long term impact of it. But maybe a year later. He brings it up as an example in the organization is how a, a way we can be outrageously kind. It wasn't that it was a big financial impact. Right. It was just we're thinking about you. Hope you get feeling better. And here's a token type thing. Yeah. And so it's really kind of pulling into that. You see that when mm-hmm. you get into culture. Right. It's it's something that just it builds on itself. And when it catches fire in your organization, then it's going to start spreading out into the community. Yeah, no, it's 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 definitely it's something that you kind of 
have to roll out. But once it, like you said, once it catches fire, it is a pivotal thing for your business and for your employees to like wrap their head around and they start taking ownership of it. Yeah. And that's a, that's a, that's a big thing. Well, it's th- at the, at the root of it. It's, it's not about the actions that we do so right. that we can brag on the actions that we do. Cause it's not about that, but it's about the mindset of, of, of outrageous kindness. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that if you, if you think in that way, then I'm going to talk to you different Ben on the phone whenever I'm having a manufacturer issue, you know, I'm going to talk to Aaron differently whenever we're having an issue with a a vendor or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then at the same point, we communicate differently with our customers and our team. Like, it's just this thing that Mm -hmm. you, that the the way that you operate. And that's just one of the eight that we rolled out, but it's, it's kind of a part of a, of a, of a mindset. It's awesome. Yeah, it is. It's great. Well, I kind of ended. It just kind of. Yeah. It's hard to beat that. It really uh, it is. Wasn't because a, it wasn't a competition, uh, Ben. No, it's not a competition. But, but it's won. just, it's a very, yeah. <laughs> it's not a competition, but if it was, you would you win. It's not a, it's, now Aaron and I no, are. Here's the, here's the good part. I mean, you don't nor- we don't normally get to, on the Coffee Break podcast, we don't normally get to hear from Chad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to ask more things of Chad. No, Christmas, no, no because see, that's, I mean, like, honestly. But you think about it. So uh, the outrageous, listen to this. Uh, outrageous, outrageous kindness. Yes. Here's outrageous kindness. We've okay. had some, we've had some turnover in Asa Aboy and, and, you know, things that yeah. are going to impact uh, make things a little bit challenging for some people whatever uh, outrageous kindness is is Chad reaching out every week to ask if there are things that he could do to help and outrageous kindness is people outside of this but other business owners from the advisory board and, and people in the company doing the same thing sending text messages saying is there anything we could do is there whatever it is that's outrageous kindness and so it's I think it's really interesting to you tell a story like that but you you practice it right in everything you do because it's not just about uh, it when somebody's in need it's also about just in general that's kind of a constant so it's 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 uh it's interesting to hear that story that you tell because i think you do have a a really positive impact on people to make them want to be kinder to others as well well you want to you want to flip all that around aaron uh, i've known aaron for several years and we've had a lot of conversations about this and especially with being intentional in in relationships and intentional with the people that you deal with. Uh, it takes, you know, we all, we, we all get thrown into different situations where you have to work with somebody, you have to deal with somebody, but then you get to a point where you get to choose yeah. who you want to deal with and who you want to, who <laughs> yeah. you want to, to set, to set partnership with. And, um, and so that's, it's part of that process. We've, we've had that conversation so many times you get into the point you want to choose and be intentional about continuing to culture relationships and build relationships. And that's part of it is understanding, Hey, you know what, as all this happens to all of us all the time, you know, especially in our business right now, we've got, we've got 31 people associated with our organization, but through media content and everything else that we're doing, we're, our reach is farther. And so now we're getting an opportunity to have conversations with people all across the country and, and other countries as well. And then it's like, okay, is it just a, hey, thanks for liking my video online, or is it an actual engaged conversation? And that's mm-hmm. the harder part. Yeah. To manage conversation right. with all these people across the country, you know, and, and stay in contact with them right. and then actually be intentional about it. Yeah. You right. You know, not just the high level, hey, how are you doing? You know, how's the weather in your neck of the woods well, type thing? Well, you're talking about that being intentional especially in the social media realm and and with with the suffer club i I, i'm not a great self-promoter but a lot of the market a lot of the industry has this pray and spray approach we're Mm -hmm. just like Mm -hmm. we're going to just blast everything and then where it lands it lands and and me and you have talked about this a lot like being intentional about relationships being intentional about what you're doing being intentional about the people that you're working with Mm -hmm. and so for the one of the things that I've tried to do with the Suffer Club, the growth has not been as fast as it probably should have been. But I'm just trying to be very intentional about the people that I tell things about or the people that I capture content about or, you know, I'll celebrate everybody. But these relationships that I want to foster and to grow into, Mm -hmm. I'm being very intentional about constantly keeping them, constantly encouraging them, constantly because those are the things that honestly are the lasting yeah. values and those are the those are the things that when it gets hard like when the suffer club goes through a change or a business goes through a change that's when you can fall back on those those things that you've been intentional with the people that are just here because you know you reached out like one time 
they're not going to be there at those hard moments, mm. but fostering continuous conversations, relationships where you're constantly engaging with this person and they know to check on you or you know to check on them. It's not just like, that's not why I'm doing it, but I'm being very intentional about the momentum and energy that I'm putting into it. And it, it has shown, it has changed a drastic amount. Yeah. I just, there's this like a struggle and balance between when you're building something, staying engaged and mm-hmm. developing your content to a level where people want to engage more right. and more frequently and they want to engage it. You know, they want to hear from right. you at a certain pace or repetition. But then there's also those times where it becomes, I'm just going to swipe because I, I'm not engaged anymore and yeah. I'm, there's too much, you know, you're, you're almost overdoing it. It's a struggle. I, you know, for you guys, I commend it because I always, I'm every time I see the Suffer Club on things, I'm always actually intentionally watching to see what's on there and, and understand what it is. Same thing with when I follow Lock Doc, seeing a truck where they are and understanding what thing what movie you're making, where you guys at on Mondays, things like that. So there is that really hard balance that you have to strike between engaging with people, mm-hmm. generating new, mm-hmm. you know, people to engage with. So you're building that message. Is it's not easy. Because you can easily fall into that overdevelopment, overproduction oh, yeah. trap. And so it's a, it's really hard to do because you want to reach more people. You want to engage with more people, but it's very, very difficult. Yeah, like as it's related to the Suffer Club, I've got like eight videos in the hopper that <laughs> wow. will, will never, like, I, I don't know when they're going to come out because I just, like, I, I don't want to create content for the sake of creating content. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to create yeah. a video like... Like, like I just, I just don't want to. Like, it has to have a purpose. It, behind it. it has to have a purpose. I want it to be something that somebody can watch. Honestly, I hope all of my videos, when you watch them, one you think it's kind of crazy, and then two you think, I could, I think I could, I think I could do that. Kind of fun. I think, I think, I think I could do that. Like, I, th- that's what I'm trying to get through all these. Like, I've got a video right now of this young girl. Her name's Katie. And she just rode 50 miles on a mountain bike in Utah. That's not easy. No, not at, like, not at all. Like, it, it's not easy to do on a road bike. No, exactly. Like, flat. to do it on a mountain bike is phenomenal. So that's one of the videos that I'm really trying to get out very soon. Mm-hmm. But it's just, like, I, like I said, I got multiple videos. I just don't want to, like, I want it to be content that people, like, are encouraged about. It pushes what the Suffer Club. I don't want it to be, you know, something that people just... You know, ooh, like, like I can't do this. I want it to be like stuff like Ben. Like you got back into running. Like if I posted crazy stuff and you were like, well, I do post crazy stuff. But like if I posted yeah. stuff that was unobtainable and not reachable to you, you wouldn't run. But dude, you've been you've been getting yeah. at it. Yeah. I mean, like this year, like like this year, what you, you told me you were gonna do like two or three marathons, right? Isn't that what you said? I didn't. Oh yeah, that. I mean that's what that's that what I heard, guys. I heard not. I heard, I, I heard you were going to do the Blue Ridge. Uh, oh, oh, no, 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 no. no. That that's is, what I that's heard. A hard, that's a hard no. That's a hard no for me. It's a hard, hard I'm no gonna there. I'm going to be I, there. I'm going to be I already do. I do bits and pieces we'll of come, it at a time. We'll come cheer you Dude, on. Dude, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. I'll do it throughout the year. Maybe. I'll do, like exactly. Could, yeah, something like that. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot. You're welcome. No. <laughs> Anyways, back to developing the content. This is why we work with people like Aaron, who, and you know, it's not just me developing videos. So, you know. We yeah. have Aaron helping us put together our right. content because I'm not a, I'm not a, obviously I could never do the things that Aaron can do with creating a message and telling a story, but then how you, at what stages do you release things and what's your right. message that you're going to give? So I'm, I'm excited about the stuff that we're working on because oh, yeah. part of it's fun. A lot of it's very tangible and hopefully it's impactful, but you have to have fun along the way. You do. You're doing it. Yeah. yeah. And it has been a lot of fun, by yes. the way. So 2018 overall has been an exciting year. And some of the things that we try to talk about is setting goals for the upcoming year. That's a, it's a big focus around here. It's a big focus for me personally. So we're talking about at a point, though, you have to have some reflection. Yeah. All right, how did, how did this year end? Did I meet my goals? How did I progress on my goals? And then start plotting out for, for the future goals. And I think that's an important aspect. I don't think we have enough time in this podcast to talk about goals for next year. So right. we won't, we won't get down that, but I think it's an important thing to have that reflection to say, this is what's happened. Um, and I've got my mindset because I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to refresh and get back at it in 2019, which is going to be an exciting year. I think for all of us, 
based off of a lot of the investment of resources and time and efforts that have been going on for many, many years, but you start seeing that, like mm-hmm. I said, the reaping of that year over year. So it should be pretty cool. Yeah. I'm going to spend a lot of time with you guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're going to spend I'm time? going, yeah. Oh, yeah. 2019, what are you talking about? It's right in the beginning of the year. Boom. Boom. San Antonio. San Antonio. Oh, yeah. We're going to Austin, Texas the first of the year. Good luck in Austin. When is it? Good luck in Austin. <laughs> we'll be in San Antonio. What is what what is that? It's March thirteenth to the fifteenth March thirteenth to the fifteenth, San Antonio, Texas. Yes. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. It's gonna be hot. No, no it's, it's March. Gosh, Why would it be hot? It's gonna be absolutely perfect. Sorry. It's gonna be beautiful. It's, it is. it's gonna be some great people. It's gonna be some great activities. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a lot of fun had by all. All. I'm really looking forward to it. So somebody asked me the other day, they said, why San Antonio? Why San Antonio? Because not Florida, number one. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> valid <laughs> it's reason. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, two, it's, I think, probably one of the um, most underappreciated cities in this entire country. Yeah. It's got a lot of history. It's very rich in, in culture. There's a lot of really exciting things to do there. I had a chance to visit the site already, had an, a phenomenal time just seeing and experiencing and, and being there. Um, and it's, I think it's time for us to shift gears a little bit yeah, and bring something new and new location, new feel, new vibe, new frontier, almost. New f- a new frontier. Well, huh, I've heard everything's say. bigger in Texas. So That's I what mean, I've heard. So, I, you know, yep. what's the next step? That's a good place to go. After, yeah, right. When you leave Florida, it's logical. Interesting. Um, so if you want to learn more about the MSC network, you can go to uh, a new part of our website, lockdoc.net slash MSC, and you can learn more about that program. Uh, side note to Lucas, make sure you get that page posted up before this launches. And, and also have that link to the Asa Abloy Door Security Solutions yeah, was, MSC locator uh, gonna, link. That would be great. I was going to say that, but I, it's going to be too hard to, to spew all that out. So uh, I'm not going to put the whole yeah. thing there, but go go to your we'll, page, we'll just, and I'll make sure you have we'll the just, link to we'll be able to go and, and find all of our awesome partners sure. across the U.S. and yeah. Canada. Really, all you need to know is lockdoc.net slash MSC. Search the Suffer Club. YouTube. Yep, there you go. Thank you guys for hanging out oh, with man, us for a little while great. today. Um, Merry Christmas in... Merry Christmas. How many days? How many? It, it, this well, today is on right today. Right now. Yeah. Today is happy, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. Yes. Pr- appreciate you guys taking time away from your families on this Christmas <laughs> yeah. day. Who? <laughs> it's cold out there. Yeah. <laughs> good job, Chris, on engineering yes. another fine episode. Fan- good job, man. Of the, uh, the, the Coffee Break podcast. We will see you guys next week for the first episode of 2019.